to the program Coming Home. And today is day 14 and our last day of this program. Melin Turkovic, Executive Director, Charter for Compassion, and I, Rakhi Sharma, Mindful Leadership Coach and a Facilitator, welcome you all for our last session. I am extremely delighted that it's been a beautiful journey for all of us. I have been able to practice and share what I have learned in these past eight years, the practice of mindfulness. And I'm, I'm so glad to know how it is impacting you. How are you using these practices? I'm, I'm extremely grateful about this. So I have been uh, in a virtual retreat organized by my Sangha. And uh, there was a sutra that I was supposed to present uh, in front of my Sangha. And it was a sutra on a better way to live alone. And basically it is about a better way to live life. And I thought uh, it would be very nice to share this with you on the last day. Uh, <clears throat> this is a sutra uh, where uh, Buddha, teaches a sutra on being alone. And uh, there was one of his uh, uh, followers, monastic. He actually started practicing in a, in a literal sense. He started doing everything all alone, sitting alone, eating alone, uh, uh, going for taking the arms uh, alone and studying alone, everything all alone. So uh, one of the <clears throat> monastics uh, came to Buddha and he shared that uh, uh, there is a venerable monk. He is actually practicing being all alone in a literal sense. So Buddha asked for this, uh, called for this uh, uh, monk. And uh, when this monk came, uh, Buddha asked him, that can you share about your practice? So this uh, venerable monk very proudly said that, oh, I practice all uh, being all alone. I eat alone and I go out and do my practices all alone. And, and then I go out for uh, taking arms, that, that is bhiksha, and I do it all, all alone. So Buddha smiled and he, uh, said, I can tell you a better way to live alone. So this uh, venerable monk uh, was curious and then he, then he heard what Buddha had to say. So Buddha told him that a better way to live alone is not to have a second body inside us. And second body means our thoughts, our ideas, which we keep ruminating about, even the idea of happiness, we keep ruminating about. And whenever we are living life in the here and now, because we live life in the present only, we, are, we always have those uh, 
biases and perceptions about how we want to live life. And because of that, we are not able to experience the present completely. So it's very important to have an attitude of a beginner's mind to live the present moment completely. And he's, he then further mentions that because of this, we whatever is available in front of us, we are not able to experience that. And we have a habit energy of running. We are always seeking something else in the moment. Even when we go out to, uh, for a holiday, we can go to mountains or seaside. There is some desire, some wish that is there which is beyond whatever is available in that moment. And we miss out of a lot of joy, peace in that moment. So Buddha finally uh, mentioned that you can live alone like this with your family anywhere. You don't have to quit uh, society. You don't have to quit uh, uh, being with your friends, with your family. You can be totally in the present and live with everyone. So I thought, let me share this uh, uh, sutra with you. There are so many things that are happening outside which are not in our control, but they control our mind and they control how we are behaving, the way we are thinking, and the emotions are triggered accordingly. So let us become mindful of how we can live a present moment in the here and now and experience the joys of life. Now we are going to do our first practice of being mindful of our breath. I invite all of you to sit straight and sit comfortably. Those who are comfortable closing their eyes, gently close your eyes. And those who are comfortable leaving their eyes open, they can fix their gaze on a object in front of them and gently focus on that object. Keep your gaze 45 degrees towards the ground. It's a guided process, so just follow my voice. Take three deep breaths and relax when you breathe out. And now release your deep breathing and breathe easy. Breathing in, I become aware of my body. Breathing out, I relax my body. Breathing in, I become aware of my body. Breathing out, I relax my body. In, aware of my body. Out, relax my body.
Breathing in, I feel joy to be alive. Breathing out, I smile to life. Breathing in, I feel joy to be alive. Breathing out, I smile to life. In, joy to be alive. Out, smile to life. Breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. Breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. In, I know I'm breathing in. Out, I know I'm breathing out. In, out. In, out. And now release the chant and only observe the in-breath and the out-breath. If the mind wanders, recognize it and gently bring it back to your observation of in-breath and out-breath. It is okay if the mind wanders. It's absolutely okay. Every time you catch yourself getting hooked on with a thought or a feeling, or any sensation, even a sound. Gently let it go and come back to the observation of your own breath going in and out.
And now I'm going to invite the bell as an indication that we are now proceeding to our second practice. Keep maintaining this space of being mindful and centered. Now we will start a practice of gratitude. Today, we are going to practice gratitude towards ourselves. We are the vehicle through which whatever we want to achieve in our lives, we are able to do through us only, through our body, through our mind, through our attitudes, beliefs and values. It is through us that we have been able to arrive in our lives today. So let us express our gratitude towards our own self, the beautiful energy that we carry, the positive intention and the grit that we have that has helped you to bring about positive change in your lives. So think about at least five such things in you which you want to be grateful about. So invite each one at a time and think of what are the things that have added value in your life that are about you and express your gratitude. And now I invite the bell once again, and we will proceed towards our practice of loving kindness meditation. Loving kindness meditation is an invitation to have openness of heart and expansion of the mind through experiencing and expressing love and kindness. So get in touch with an experience of love that you have inside you. the kindness that you have inside you. Immerse yourself in that experience of love and kindness. Feel it growing.
from your heart center, reaching out to every cell of your body, from head to toe, from your back to your front. Visualize it as a warm pink radiant light. and see it growing. See it growing further and further. And you are so full of this beautiful light of love and kindness that it is bursting out of you. And you're bathing in this light the beautiful pink radiant light and it's forming a circle all around you and you're glowing I'm going to speak a few affirmations and you can mentally chant Today in your circle, invite everyone, the ones whom you love, whom, who have cared for you, loved you. Those who have wished well for you. People who have been in your uh, inner circle and around. Known and unknown, from near and far, bring them in this circle. See your circle growing bigger and bigger. Invite even those whom you think have harmed you. They have harmed you because they didn't know any better. They have been troubled. And that is why unknowingly they have done what they have done. So they need the most a lot of love and kindness. So invite them. And here I speak up the affirmations and mentally chant for everyone in the circle. May we all be well. May we all be healthy. May we all be safe. May we have the power to accept and forgive. May we all love and appreciate others boundlessly. May we all get happiness that we all deserve in our life. May we always be surrounded with people who love us and care for us. I'm inviting the bell to end our practice. Rub your palms and make them warm. 
and now gently place them over your eyes. And then gently rub it over your face. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. As today is the last day of our program, I want to share the significance of practice. And I have a story to share with you. Long, long ago in faraway China, there lived an archer. He was a very skilled archer and could perform wonderful feats of archery. He could hit the target precisely at the center, even when it was placed at a very long distance. He liked to show off his skill to the admiring crowds that gathered around him. One day, he was practicing his skill in front of many admirers. And there he noticed an old man standing at the back. The old man was carrying loads of oil contained in gourds that were hanging from a long cane on his shoulders. All the other people were clapping their hands and praising the archer. But this old man neither clapped nor uttered words of praise. He only uttered the words, it is only a matter of practice. The archer was annoyed. He said, what do you think that you comment like this? Are you an archer yourself? Do you think you can perform like me? Who are you? The old man replied, no, sir, I don't doubt your skill. I'm an oil seller. I fill these gourds with oil and sell them. Over the years, I have achieved some skill in filling the gourds. If you allow, I will show it to you. Everybody was curious to see what would happen next. The old man kept the gourd on the ground. A gourd has a very narrow neck. So this old man poured oil with a ladle and not a drop of oil spilled out. The whole crowd, including the archer, were speechless. The old man smiled and said, there's nothing special about it. It's only a matter of practice. So my dear friends, you have practiced something since last two weeks and a little more. Now it's a choice. Would you like to practice the practice that you've learned? Or would you like to practice uh, being uh, bit lazy sometimes, maybe having some something else that is that you think is important and foregoing your practice. So whatever you will practice, you will have it in your life. This is my wish that this beautiful practice that I've learned and it has benefited me and not just me, millions of people through centuries. I wish that you all also Take the benefit of this practice. So pick up an affirmation or an intention from all that you have picked up from these practices. Keep it as a dedicatory wish to guide you further to live your life, a wholesome life. I wish that your awareness guides you. I wish that you live a life true to yourself, be an inspiration to yourself and others around you. 
I want to thank Marilyn and Charter to support me to bring this offering to all of you. This program wouldn't have been complete without all of you. So I'm very, very grateful that you have been co-travelers along with me to do this practice. Before we end, uh, I request you to share your information, your intention here on the chat so that others can also be inspired. Merlin, would you like to say uh, a few words? Yes, I will um, say the same thing that Rocky says, uh, that it is a pleasure uh, to have people join us. Um, I think doing a practice singularly is, uh, has a feel to it, but then knowing that there are many with you is totally different. And we should say that we are talking uh, about how we might be able to do this again and not the too distant future. So we'll certainly let you know uh, through either a newsletter or a direct uh, communication. Thank you for coming and for sharing all of the thoughts uh, that you are. Thank you so much. And may you have a very wonderful, joyful life. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Goodbye.